Well, good morning and welcome to Midweek Connection from First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. My name is Pastor Joel. And I am David Welch. And today is Wednesday, June 8th, and we're as uh, excited to be here to get, uh, today. We haven't been with David for a while, uh, and excited to hear what God might speak to us through his word today. And I just want to open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, thank you so much for all of your love for us. Thank you for calling us to be your people, uh, for equipping us for the calls that you have given to us, uh, encouraging us and uh, challenging us to, to love other people as, as you have loved us. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would bless us through the reading uh, of your word today and our discussion of it. I pray that your Holy Spirit would fill us and change us and challenge us uh, as we reflect upon your love your, your perfect and eternal love that you have for us. So we thank you and we praise you, and it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. So starting this morning with Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Our second psalm is Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord, and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food, and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, and those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Hebrew scripture reading today comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verses 11 through 18. Again I saw that under the sun the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the intelligent, nor favor to the skillful, but time and chance happen to them all. For no one can anticipate the time of disaster. Like fish taken in a cruel net, and like birds caught in a snare, so mortals are snared at a time of calamity when it suddenly falls upon them. I have also seen this example of wisdom under the sun, 
and it seemed great to me. There was a little cry with few people in it. Sorry, there was a little city with few people in it. A great king came against it and besieged it, building great siege works against it. Now there was found in it a poor, wise man, and he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Yet no one remembered that poor man. So I said, Wisdom is better than might, yet the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heeded. The quiet words of the wise are more to be heeded than the shouting of a ruler among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one bungler destroys much good. Our New Testament epistle reading comes from Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Listen, I, Paul, am telling you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you. Once again, I testify to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obliged to obey the entire law. You who want to be justified by the law have cut yourselves off from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. You were running well. Who prevented you from obeying the truth? Such persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough. I am confident about you in the Lord that you will not think otherwise, but whoever it is that is confusing you will pay the penalty. But my friends, why am I still being persecuted if I am still preaching circumcision? In that case, the offense of the cross has been removed. I wish those who unsettle you would castrate themselves. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. I'm just going to let that sit there for a second before I do our next reading. Our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through 12. The Pharisees and Sadducees came, and to test Jesus, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, When it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times, an evil an adulterous generation asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. And Jesus left them and went away. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, Watch out and beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They said to one another, It is because we have brought no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said, You of little faith, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves for the five thousand and how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the four thousand and how many baskets you gathered? How could you fail to perceive that I was not speaking about bread? Beware the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. 
Then they understood that he had not told them to beware of the yeast of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Uh, and I've read a little bit too far, but they said, Some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Our third psalm is Psalm 132. The Lord, remember in David's favor all the hardships he endured, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob, I will not enter my house or get into my bed, I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the Mighty One of Jacob. We heard of it in Ephratah. We found it in the fields of Jar. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Rise up, O Lord, and go to your resting place, you in the ark of your might. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your faithful shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away from the face of your anointed one. The Lord, the Lord swore to David a sure oath from which he will not turn back. One of the sons of your body I will set on your throne. If your sons keep my covenant, and my decrees that I shall teach them, their sons also, forevermore, shall sit on your throne. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here I will reside, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless its provisions. I will satisfy its poor with bread. Its priests I will clothe with salvation, and its faithful will shout for joy. There I will cause a horn to sprout up for David. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed one. His enemies I will clothe with disgrace, but on him his crown will gleam. And our final psalm today is Psalm 134. Come. Bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Uh, David, I'm, I'm really happy that you're here today, and I might, I might lean a little bit on your understanding today, because these are... Uh, these are always interesting passages, and I know that I say this regularly when we do the lectionary reading, how two psalms, usually a prophetic word, a gospel word, and an epistle word, uh, the whole counsel of God from Genesis to Revelation uh, is the story of God loving his people from creation to redemption, how he is calling them to be in relationship with him. And how at every moment of our lives, whether we are sometimes close to God or sometimes far from God, how he is always wooing us, um, always loving, always forgiving, always generous, always compassionate. Um, and then there are times that those attributes of God uh, come across a little on the difficult side. And his, his justice and his righteousness, uh, his holiness, um, his... his uh, his disdain for evil and the judgment that he will bring upon that. Um, those, those eternal attributes of God 
that we see revealed to us in Scripture that are to be uh, encouraging, yes, and also challenging. And I think we get a lot of that today uh, in, in all of our texts, both that, uh, both that incredible uh, encouragement and that incredible challenge uh, that, uh, that we as humans, because God has called us into a full relationship with him, uh, not to convert us into uh, automatons that, are, uh, that have lost our individual will uh, uh, and, and therefore uh, robotically just do the things that God commands, but we in the fullness of our will, even when we struggle with disobedience, even when we struggle um, with our own selfish desires, God wants us as people that he has created, as people that he loves, to fully love him. So uh, the more our lives become uh, uh, accustomed to his word and obedient to his word, uh, the more fully we are uh, united with God. For, for his eternal glory and ultimately for our eternal glory and benefit. Um, and so, so knowing that to be true and really believing that to be true, uh, it helps us to, uh, to appreciate some of those harder passages. Uh, Ecclesiastes starts with this, uh, this reminder from uh, you know, wisdom literature, this reminder that uh, the way we find ourselves in the human condition uh, how he talks, you know, the, the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, or riches to the intelligent. Well, this is exactly contrary to everything that the world would tell us. The world would tell us that, oh no, it is only by your skills or by your faults that you are either successful or failing. And, and the wisdom in Ecclesiastes is, no, there's something more going on here, something that we aren't always aware of. Mm -hmm. um, and but if but if we look at if we look at the world today, how can we not see that uh, the the rich and the famous are are just as, if not more so, messed up than ordinary people? You might have great riches, you might have great fame, but if you have to spend days and days and days in a courtroom suing your ex-wife over defamation and have your whole lives dragged before the world. Like, who, who wants that? Who wants that? And even, even though one person might come out on top and the other person might have to, you know, it's like, what a, what a waste of time. What a waste of a life that, why, why can't we just live at peace with one another? being obedient to what God has called us to do and trusting that he's got good plans for our lives. This whole idea here that wisdom is superior to folly really just uh, exemplifies that. Uh, those who are often uh, the most um, bombastic in their opinions, those who are always at the forefront of every cultural or uh, you know, fashion or athletic or business, you know, those people who are really out there, when you, when you look at their character, when you look at their, uh, uh, when you look at their uh, compassion for other people, it's often lacking. Uh, and, and yet society continues to elevate them as the, the paragons of, of what we should be trying to obtain. And here in the wisdom of Ecclesiastes, the poor man delivered the city and no one remembers the poor man, but we remember those rich and those powerful, and even though they had caused the destruction to come upon them in the first place, and the poor person has to deliver them, how difficult it is for humans to actually understand that God's wisdom and God's power uh, come through often unexpected ways, ways that the world would be discounting, uh, but ways that actually accomplish what God is trying to do. God being glorified, uh, humans being uh, living lives that are, are, are worthy of God uh, in love and compassion and generosity to others. Um, it's just so different than anything the world would ever uh, come up with. Uh, and certainly, absent the Holy Spirit, there's no possible way that we can even uh, obtain that, that standard of living. Uh, we certainly need God to be transforming our lives that we would be happy to be the poor man that speaks wisdom rather than the rich man that speaks folly.
Yeah. Yeah. I think it's pretty clear in that passage from Ecclesiastes that uh, you know, all the things we do to try to be successful or um, it it's not that those things don't bring success in the world's terms it's that time and chance happen to everyone right uh, nothing's guaranteed in this world uh, and so because of that um, you know the writer of Ecclesiastes is holding up wisdom as uh as this thing that is, it's more valuable than uh, success, it's more valuable than riches, it's more valuable uh, than power. Uh, it's, if uh, you know, we, we are often in our culture so concerned that our kids get the best start in life, that they become successful, that mm-hmm. they are equipped to have a good job, that they, um, you know, that they achieve success and, and terms of our culture but actually it's better if our kids uh, if our kids lay hold of wisdom Mm -hmm. that's the key thing even if they end up poor even if they end up unsuccessful even if they're forgotten Mm -hmm. uh, and they don't do anything great at all uh, if they're wise that is much more valuable and uh, much more valuable Uh, they're gonna be they're going to flourish if they're wise, uh, whether they're rich or not. Um, and that's what we should be striving for, I think. Yeah, that's a challenging word, uh, David. Uh, it, it, it's so true. Uh, obviously, every parent wants what is best for their child or their children. Uh, you know, I know that you've got a, a young one who's, who's growing up, and every time I see him, uh, he's, he's growing and he's, he's doing more things and exploring more things. Uh, and, and my children are all, uh, are all out of my house now and, and going on to, to live lives um, largely on their own. It's not, that, it's not that my wife and I won't care for them or support them or encourage them or challenge them. But, uh, but yeah, they're going to have to make these decisions. And I certainly hope and pray that they would make decisions that are based upon uh, upon God and and the wisdom that God gives. Um, when we look at the the Galatians passage, how these these pretty uh, these pretty challenging words that that Paul gives to the Galatians uh, just kind of exemplifies the, the the tension and the conflict that even people in the church have with with obtaining that wisdom because we can we can hear the teachings of Jesus and obviously these people have uh, you know if they're going to church that means they've at least they at least know who Jesus is they know his commandments and they're they, they know that they're supposed to love one another uh, but there's this 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 tendency within the Galatian church to be falling back into worldly patterns mm-hmm. they are pursuing uh, <coughs> As, as Jesus would have described it from the Matthew passage, the teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, essentially. Hey, just, just be a morally upstanding citizen, which is not bad in and of itself, um, but, uh, but you have to completely and totally uh, follow every aspect of the law uh, uh, in order to be saved. And, and Paul's reminding them that, that the grace of Jesus Christ is superior to following the law. Following the law is important. God gave us the law um, uh, to remind us of a couple things. One, you know, what, what God requires of us. Two, uh, the fact that we can't fully uh, follow the law, which means we need to depend on God. And then, you know, three, um, as really um, uh, punishments against those things that are that are unbecoming and uh, but but here in Galatians, uh, it really does link back to that Matthew passage. They're both discussing the yeast that grows up within the body, and, and, and in this case, it, it seems that you know, yeast is is symbolic of of, of false teaching and uh, uh, the tendency that humans have to be uh, doing things on their own apart from God. Um, Jesus was talking to the disciples and says, "Don't you remember?" Um, I was able to create food for every.
everybody from nothing. Uh, this, the, if you if you adhere to the teaching of the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they they can't do that. Their their teaching is is false ultimately. I am the one who provides, and if you want to go back to that yeast uh, of the false teachings, then you're putting yourself back into slavery. You're you're putting yourself back in a place that you have no hope of getting out from, because I'm the one who's provided hope. Stick with Jesus. Uh, continue to follow after Him. Uh, trust in his wisdom and his goodness uh, and and you know quit quit living a life of, of double loyalty you know following after the things of the world with the little Jesus on the side is not what God calls us to follow after Jesus completely let his wisdom guide and direct your life uh, and avoid um, getting cut off from the grace that's freely available to you Pretty harsh when, when Paul says, you know, I wish that they would be castrated um, or cut off. As <laughs> thanks, thanks, Paul, for for graphic language there. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's, a, it's it's not a it's not a pleasant image uh, to be to be cut off from Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I, I guess uh, I think we probably just have a few minutes left here, but um, just a kind of a reminder of the context of this passage in Galatians that uh, Paul is writing to a, to the church in Galatia, and uh, there are uh, apparently people who have been preaching to the Galatians that they have to follow the Jewish law in order to be Christians. Right? So, you know, you're, you're, thinking, you're uh, dealing with a time in which uh, the first Christians were all Jewish. And so one of the big issues of the early church was <clears throat> do Christians, do Gentiles who become Christians, are they obligated to follow the whole Jewish law, including being circumcised and, and all the things that the Pharisees uh, taught? Uh, and ultimately, the church, um, uh, led by the Spirit, uh, declared that no, they, they did not have to follow the whole law, that the, the teaching of Jesus, the way of Jesus marked something new. Um, now, you know, that, that doesn't make the law worthless. I mean, the law was given by God. It was one of the most precious gifts given to the people of Israel. So, of course, they, they, um, they wanted to keep it. But um, you know, Paul is, is saying, you know, look, the way, the way of Christ is, is different. You've been called to a whole new life. You've been set free. You've been given this, uh, this freedom from God, the freedom of someone who is a new creation. Now, there is a way we're supposed to use that freedom, and that's in accordance with the law of love, which is what Paul points right. them to. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Right. You've been given that freedom not to sin, but to love one another. Um, we're, we're set free from the burden of the law and set free in order to love one another. Right. Yeah, great reminder, David. Absolutely. And I think that's uh, honestly what it's all about, you know. Mm -hmm. If if, uh, if if God is love, that is a, a huge attribute of God, uh, and and Jesus gave that command, you know, love God, and then love your neighbor, uh, right? Freedom not to sin, but freedom to love uh, fully within the grace of God, knowing that we are loved, then we have the freedom to love other people, knowing that God loves us so much, so that we don't have to lord over people we mm -hmm. can serve them mm -hmm. uh, knowing that we don't have to protect our our own rights because uh, because God is the one that is lifting us up when we struggle and when we suffer it's just yeah it's a great freedom in that mm -hmm. that's 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 good well thanks David for joining me today uh, and thank you for 
working through some of these difficult texts. And I do want to encourage all of you as you as you do continue to read the lectionary texts throughout the week. And, and trust that God will reveal to you also what he wants you to learn from them. Uh, and then pray that God, through his spirit, would give you the, the power to follow more closely, that you would be transformed by what you read. Uh, there, are, there are some times that I read these things and then I just really say nothing but sit and marvel at how powerful God's word to us. What a blessing it is that we have a chance to read these things. Well, well, David, would you, would you like to close us in prayer today? Sure. Great. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your word. Uh, we thank you for the gift of your word, even and especially when it challenges us and calls us to change our way of life, Lord. Uh, I pray that uh, you would open the, the eyes and ears of our hearts to what you are saying and doing in your word and in this church and help us to, to make ourselves slaves of one another in love. Help us to embrace that, that radical and wonderful call to love you with everything we have and to love our neighbors even as ourselves. Uh, bless this church and bless all those uh, listening today. Uh, speak to them and be with them. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, for the gift of your spirit, and uh, for all the ways in which you bless us. It's in the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.